of surrender that invites the spirit of resurrection. God says I will do a new thing in because you can't have new things until you let go of old things. There's a way of life, there's a way of death. Jesus said, I am the one. And eternal life does not begin when you die and go to heaven. It begins now when you make this choice for Christ. Jesus laid one body down on Calvary and he picked another body up on the day of Pentecost. He's gonna do it again. Where are the people? Where are the prayer warriors? turn the tide. It's time to cry out for a genuine manifestation of the heart of the Lord God Almighty and the authentic spirit of revival. Let the church be the church. Let the people arise. Let them be loud in this season. That if it had not been for the blood of Jesus, I'd be on my way to hell. But because of the blood of Jesus, I am a part of his glorious church. You're about to leave this conference looking dangerous to the devil. But God brought me here to tell you, get ready, get ready, get ready. You are about to step into a season of more than enough. But God is looking for somebody that says, God, I want to see your hand move on my generation. But I'm here to say This is going to be the best night. Why? Because God's here. Come on, if you believe God's here, somebody shout, yeah! Elijah declaring the word of the Lord and these are the days of your servant Moses righteousness being restored and though these are days of great trial of famine and darkness and sword still we are the voice in the desert crying prepare ye the way of the lord
like this. Come on, let's declare this out loud, men. There's no God. Say, there's no God like Jehovah. Everybody. Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. <laughs> He's alive. He lives forever and ever. Nobody like him. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive.
Jesus doesn't have a specific time when you give it praise, when you give him worship. Jesus is not some kind of idol that you worship just on some times and this day and that day. It's like I said this morning, there is constant worship because he gave all of heaven, he gave you a reason to dance. So why stop? Why get back? If you have a reason, I want you to take about 30 seconds and give God a different praise. Give God, I know you're tired, I know you feel sleepy, but give Him something fresh.
my God is able to say and deliver and heal and restore anything that He wants to. Come on, sing it. My God is able to say and deliver and heal and restore anything that He wants. Sing my God. My God is able to say for the next couple of minutes. Come on, just worship him. Come on, you're not serving a God who doesn't have eyes and ears tonight. You are able to save and deliver it. Oh, he heard you the first time you prayed. He heard you the first time you prayed. He heard you the first time you prayed. Oh, just wait a little longer. on the Lord. Come on.
my agenda. I'm sorry. When I just sing another song, take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. And I'm sorry when I've come. With my agenda, I'm sorry When I forgot that you're enough Take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you Come on, sing, I'm caught up We sing, I'm caught up in your presence We'd rather be caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Sing, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't owe me. Sing, I'm Nothing else will do. I just want you. 
think it's so amazing that we come in here and we ask the Lord, Lord, I want you to do this and I want you to do this. And that's so amazing and it's needed and it's important. But if all we ask is give me, give me, we're operating in, in nearly a pharisaical spirit because the Pharisees would be like, I need you to show us a miracle for you, for us to believe who you are. Show us a miracle for us to believe who you are. And Jesus would rebuke them and say, how dare you ask me to show you a miracle that to, to just show you who I am. I'm standing right before you. All you need is my presence. Yes, I'll give you a miracle. Yes, I'll give you what you need. When was the last time you just asked him to come? When was the last time you just asked Jesus not to just come into your life, but come just because I want you, just because I can't live, I can't breathe without the presence of God? Please don't get me wrong. I'll ask the Lord all day, Lord, I need this and I need this. But I'll end the prayer with, but if that doesn't happen, you're the only one that satisfies. You're the only one that satisfies. If you don't do another thing for me, you're still worthy. If you don't say another thing to me, you said enough. But I'm going to give you praise. I'm going to give you adoration in the middle, in the end, in the beginning, because you're worthy of it. He's in the room. Come on, he's in. He's here. He's here. He's here. Somebody's being healed in your kidneys right now. Somebody's being healed in your kidneys right now. Specifically, I feel that on the left side. It's just a miracle of healing. Some pain's going away right now so that you can enjoy the rest of the service. The pain is going away now so you can enjoy the rest of your night and the rest of your weekend. Somebody's been dealing with some shoulder, some shoulder inflammation, some stuff in your neck. I just feel and sense that the Lord is healing that. Who is that right there? Just somebody let me know that's you. Anybody in the room? I said, just, I just got to feel something different. I just feel that in my shoulders, in my neck. You're going to enjoy the rest of the night, and you're going to enjoy tomorrow. You don't have to worry about that pain. You popped enough Advil and some Tylenol, and somebody been popping that and this and that. And, but can I tell you that the miracle has already happened? I said the miracle's already happened. The blood was enough 2,000 years ago. The miracle has already happened. It's not Jesus is on the way. Jesus is already here. Hallelujah. Now, before we transition, I want you to just give the Lord the greatest hand clap of praise that you've given him all day. Come on, you've learned how to praise him. You've learned how to praise him today. You might as well go ahead and take about 30 seconds just to warm up for the next of the night. Come on, you understand now that if it had not been for the Lord, if it had not been for the Lord, you'd be in hell, jacked up, smoked up, 
packed up in, but because of the Lord. Somebody holler in this house. Now grab that sweaty hand beside you. Come on, grab that sweaty hand beside you. The devil hates this. We've been doing this this weekend. I know, I know, I know, I know. But if you can't hold the hand of your brother, you're not a brother. Now squeeze that hand real tight. Let him know how important he is to you. And just like last night, if you understand and realize how desperate that hand is you hold and it depends on your ability to pray for him. I want you to pop the devil upside the head right now with unity. Unity, unity of the brethren. Unity in prayer, unity in roar, unity in agreement, unity, unity. I got you bro, I got you. I got you man, I got you. I got you. Come on, pray for him. Pray for him, pray for him, pray for him. Come on, just a little longer, come on right there. Pray for his wife. If he ain't got a wife, pray for the wife to come. Pray for his children and his children's children. Praise God. Praise the Lord. That's right, that's right. Father, we, we promise to pray you one for another just like you've instructed us to do. Amen. 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 Did you feel that? You feel that right there? You say, well, why we got to feel something? Listen, I don't want to be a part of something. I can't feel it. I, don't, I wouldn't give you $10,000 for something I can't feel. I want to feel the presence and the power and the glory of the Holy Ghost. Did you just feel him in the room tonight? Look at your neighbor and say, let's go deeper, bro. Let's go deeper. We're going deeper tonight. As you find your seats, as you find your seats, as you find your seats, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God heal you. God heal your shoulder. Hallelujah, man. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. Ain't nothing like Friday night. And the world thinks it knows how to celebrate Friday night, but the church and the brothers in the Lord knows how to have church as you find your seats. Just believe here as we transition. Praise God, praise God. I've had some of the strangest things today. I've heard it three different times. Pastor, I've experienced a financial increase today while I was in church. I know of one who had a $26,000 miracle today. Now don't get jealous. If you can't bless the guy who got it before you, then you won't ever see it. Another one, a young businessman walked up to me a while ago and he said, I just got a $20,000 account for my business. Look at your name and say, I'm next. And then another pastor in the room said, you're not going to believe it, but somebody walked up to me and gave me $3,000 today. You say, well, what's that got to do with anything? God cares about your finances. He knows your need. He knows, first of all, he knows your name. And second of all, he knows your need. And third of all, he knows that he is the God who provides all of your needs. Amen. I want to bring to the platform tonight as we prepare for our tithe or prepare for the offering. And you've been so faithful, guys, to give and to support. 
into the ministry this weekend. First of all, let me recognize this. I understand that you paid a registration to be here and I honor you for that. I learned a long time ago that I can invest in a lot of things, but if I don't invest in myself, then I can never expect to grow or produce anything. Whatever you paid to be in here, let me tell you, you're invest you are worth an investment into yourself. Somebody say amen. amen. You've given, you've bought pro product. I see a lot of the shirts. Tomorrow is shirt day. Whatever you wear, I don't care if you've already worn it and you done sweated that thing up and it sounds, smells like a grizzly bear on a sweaty Sunday. Tomorrow, you're going to want to take a lot of pictures, and group pictures and things like that. You say, well, that sounds like a women's conference. Well, listen, she's going to want to see the pictures and she's going to want you to be dressed right. Somebody say amen in this Presbyterian church. Come on. And we love Presbyterians. God bless you. But you've given, you've sown, you've bought product. You'll continue to buy product. Support all of the speakers. And Have you loved all of the speakers so far? Yeah. Amen. Good gracious, what an arsenal. But uh, tonight I want to encourage you to participate. And I want to bring to the platform a very powerful man of God. Known all over the world. He's a very well-spoken man and a well, very well-spoken of man. Dr. Coy Barker, internationally known orator and author, author is a founder of Elevation Point. Dr. Barker, uh, a Hollis, Oklahoma native. Oklahoma's in the house. Do I need to read all of this? I can. Let me just share my heart. I met he and Miss D a hundred years ago. In Atlanta, Georgia, they used to host me and Pastor Judy to come and minister to their church. Powerful man of God who is a mentor to men in the ministry. Yeah. Pastors, listen to me. You will never know it all, but you can, al you can always glean for somebody who has already paved a way, trailed created a path don't try to guess get somebody in your life that's mentoring you but Dr. Barker is very powerful you've seen him on television you've seen him on TBN you've seen him on Daystar you've seen him with Pastor Benny you've seen him with Pastor Rod you've seen him with a lot of different well-known pastors leaders in the nation he's counseled authorities imagine that but tonight he's in Cleveland Tennessee I said tonight he's in Cleveland Tennessee Tonight he's in Cleveland, Tennessee at King's Table Conference. And I want you to stand to your feet and just honor this mighty man of God. He and his lovely wife, Dee Barker, are in the house. Bishop, please come. Apostle, leader, man of God, Dr. Coy Barker. Bless you, sir. Love you. Give it up for Jesus, somebody. I want to hear the Pentecostals give it up for Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you so much for allowing us to be here. We give such honor to the great leaders of this ministry. God has raised up Apostles Jamie and Judy Tuttle for such an hour as this. And I want you to know we honor you. We love you. Thank you for being our friend, standing with us all these years. Thank you for that covenant of fellowship. Give it up for our leaders. Come on, somebody. <laughs> They're worthy of double honor. We're so grateful for their leadership known around the world. Such powerful, powerful voices for the kingdom of God. I'm so grateful that my wife Dee is with me. I travel nowhere without her. And if I was the official speaker tonight, she'd be singing because I don't ever preach till she creates the wave for me to get up on. I'd like for Dee to stand.
Tell my wife you love her tonight. Thank you, baby, for being here. It's always an honor to be with Apostle Tim Rayleigh, one of the greatest voices in the kingdom, building the kingdom of God like no other. We're so honored to be here and share a few moments with you tonight. But I believe God has something very special that he wants to do in your life. I believe that we are on the edge of the greatest days in the kingdom. There is a move of God coming to the believers like we have never seen. God is raising up an army who is not afraid to obey the voice of God. That's the hour in which we're living in. And I'm so honored to be a part of what God's doing in the kingdom. And I believe with all my heart that this conference is the gateway to the greatness of God in your, in your life, your ministry, and in the churches. If you can't feel God in this house, there's something wrong with you. We need to get the undertaker call because I'm telling you, God is visiting this conference with a supernatural move of God. I'm so comfortable in this atmosphere because I believe this is the moment God chose for you, for your family, and your future. I believe God raised you up for such an hour as this. And when I began to communicate with Apostle Jamie, something leaped inside of me that said this is a moment of miracles like some of you have never seen in your life. God is about to open up the witness of heaven, pour you out a blessing that you have never witnessed in your life. I'm here to tell you there is a move of an acceleration of the blessings of God. I got news for you, God's about to restore everything hell has taken. <laughs> Matter of fact, Proverbs 631 says he's gonna give it back seven times. Do I have any believers in the house? God's about to give it back to you seven times. And I believe that there is an uncommon, supernatural release of God's provision that's going to hit the kingdom. I still believe this Bible over the opinions of people. This is the final authority. God said there's coming a move of restoration like my eyes have never seen. He said in Joel 2, 25, 26, he's going to restore your years and your finances. I believe we've stepped into that zone where God's going to do incredible restoration of God's people. I believe it's going to be a move of God that's going to shock the families. It's going to shock the naysayers. It's even going to shock your haters what God is about to do. Would somebody give him a shout of praise? A couple of scriptures I want to give you before I ask you to plant a seed in the kingdom of God. The Lord said to me today, very powerfully from the, and I love Apostle Jamie said, I read for my edification the simple Bible. Man, I felt that so good because that's what I read every morning. When I get up to seek God, I either read the Message Bible, the Passion Translation, or the Living New Testament. I just soak it up in my heart. Recently, the Lord took me in the Passion Translation to Psalm 102, 13. He said, now is the time. Somebody say, now is the time. Say it with authority. Now is the time. 
the appointed time has come for the prophetic promises to be fulfilled. How many is ready to receive your prophetic promise? Oh, come on, I said, how many? God said, I'm gonna fulfill the prophetic promises that I've made to you. First Chronicles 12, 32 said, it's very valuable that you know the times and the seasons. How I many knows it's a very important moment right now? It's a God moment in your life. It's a moment when God is gonna do suddenlies in your family, in your life, in your business. God's gonna do suddenlies in your life. I remember so many years ago, I was going to West Palm quite often because that's where Dee was living. I walked in one Sunday night to the church that she was part of, and I'd flown in from Atlanta and was there to speak for my friend, Pastor Fred. And I walked in the back of the building, looked up on the platform, and I saw this beautiful blonde up there with the worship team. I went, oh my Jesus. I leaned over to the pastor and I said, Pastor, uh, is that blonde right there married? He said, no. I said, well, hot dog. He said, you're here to preach. I said, I'm fixing to preach the paint off the walls. I said, is she dating anybody that I need to take care of? And he said, get your mind on Jesus. I said, it is. <laughs> and I happened to bump into her in the aisle that night, and the rest is history. Praise God. She has been a miracle in my life beyond my words of description. A couple that she was very close to, very, very good friends, owned a little bitty roofing business, had a little pickup truck, and they just started a little roofing business, Ed and Deb, and uh, I got to minister to him. That night, the first night that I preached in that church, he hadn't been saved very long, was the first night he ever heard the message that God said his kingdom people will live by seed time and harvest. Anybody ever heard that? Genesis 8, 22, God said, we'll live by seed time and harvest. And he grabbed a hold of that. We made covenant in our life. He serves, he and Deb on our official board. We've been deep friends for decades now. And it's been amazing to watch what God has done in their life. And their business now is not a little pickup truck. Last year, they took in $78 million in the roofing business because they believe in seed time. Can I hear somebody that believes the Bible? Give him a shout. I was on worldwide television. I made a comment about seed time, and I said, you know, there's something about God's economy that I've never figured out, I can't explain it to you, but something happens when you give $1,000 to God. As a seed of faith, something takes place. A little Baptist lady happened to be from the little town my church was in, in Loganville, Georgia, was watching that worldwide telecast, and she made a phone call gave the $1,000, said to the little person, I don't understand one thing about what that preacher said, but something touched my heart when he pointed that long finger in that TV camera and said, you're the one. She said, I'm a senior adult. I have a bill that's tens of thousands of dollars. I cannot pay it from the hospital, and I need a miracle so I'm making a sacrifice for the kingdom of God. I caught a plane, come back to Loganville. The phone rang. About four days later, the little, little senior adult was on the phone. My son had answered the phone. 
And uh, Dustin said she was crying and excited and said, I don't know how to say this because I'm a little Baptist, but I'm feeling God all over this phone call right now. And she said, I called because I saw your daddy on, the, on television. He asked for a $1,000 seed. I gave it in faith that God would give me a miracle for my tens of thousands of dollars of hospital bills. And she said, two days after I made that gift, a man walked into the hospital that I had just left a big bill in and said to the administrative office, I'm a spirit-filled believer. I have been blessed supernaturally, and I'd like to pay somebody's hospital bill off. You say, oh, Coy Barker, that would just happen. No, that didn't happen just because it happened. It happened because an act of faith triggered the hand of God that moved on somebody to go to that hospital and take care of it. Can I hear somebody that's a believer give him a shout? And she said, they said, well, a little senior adult had to check out of here left a, a, a real big hospital bill, and uh, we just told her to pay whatever she could every month, $5, $10, whatever she could. And he said, well, guess what? I'm taking out my checkbook. Tell me how much it is. He never blinked. He wrote a check for it. And then they sent her a letter that got to her, and that's why she called our church and she said, I opened up that letter with fear because I figured it was a, a warning. I had to get that bill paid. And they said and called her by name and said, just got to tell you, God sent an angel into the hospital and just paid your bill in full. It is done. Somebody give him a shout that needs God to break the back of debt off of your life. I believe God's going to break the spirit of debt off of you. I believe he's going to release the spirit of increase. And I believe he's going to bring miracles financially, physically, emotionally, and to your house. So can somebody say, I'm ready for a miracle? A couple of more stories and I'll get out of your way. I never will forget. When the revelation of God came to me and Dee, she walked down the, the stairs from her office down to the basement to my office, and she was almost white. And I said, babe, what's wrong with you? She said, I just realized today that me and you over, owe over $600,000. Our name is on the line for it. I don't know how we're going to pay that. I looked at her and I said, you know, I believe this book right here more than I believe anything else. And I believe God's going to erase our debt if we'll get a seed big enough in the ground. She and I made a commitment, planted a sacrifice into the kingdom of God. And let me tell you, in a few short months, she walked back down to my office but this time had a smile on her face, and she said, guess what, honey? All the debt is gone. We owe no man nothing. Can somebody give God a shout of praise in the house? Is there anybody beside me that needs increase from the hands of God? God steal Jehovah Jireh. God steal the mighty God, and he will work a miracle. He will work a miracle. I never will forget, I was helping pioneer a little church in Alabama and Hartsville, Alabama. A couple had come from the First Baptist Church of Hartsell, got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There's teacher of the young adult Sunday school class, went back to their pastor, made an appointment, said, Pastor, we don't know what to do with this, but we got the baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. And he said, well, you can't do that here. They came back 
drove back to our church quite a distance the next Sunday and said, uh, we got kicked out of our church. So you're starting a church in our, t in our city next week. I said, I don't think so. They said, oh, yes, you are, because we have to have a church for our family and our friends. I said, okay, I tell you what, you get a little storefront, I'll show up. Showed up that uh, Monday night, and when I showed up, there wasn't but about 25, 30 people. We had a good service. Something come on me. I don't know what it was. I'm Indian. It might have been Indian. I don't know. Something came on me, and I said, tomorrow night, bring all the sick people that you can bring because God's going to build this church supernaturally on signs, wonders, and miracles. So the next night, they didn't know what, you know, they're, they were unlearned. They didn't know you're supposed to save a parking place for the pastor. So I got there about 10 minutes early. There wasn't a place anywhere downtown for me to park. And in front of the little storefront was an ambulance. Because I'd said, if you have to bring them in an ambulance, tell them it's a one-way ticket. You won't need two ways. And so I drove around looking for a spot, saw that ambulance sitting there, and I thought, oh, Jesus, uh, please help me. I hope that was God. I said that last night. So I finally found me a place to park, walked into that building. There was a piece of flesh laying on a stretcher under an oxygen tent. There Letha lay 78 pounds. They sent her home to die. And she, her daughter, I didn't know it was her daughter, but her daughter was standing beside her, two paramedics. Jim stepped up to lead worship. Nobody was interested in worship. They were looking at that woman sucking for air and breath, dying right there on that stretcher. I stopped him and I said, Jim, just forget it. I said, let's let God heal this woman, then we can shout all night. I stepped over to the stretcher. And I said, uh, who are you? And she said, I'm Letha's daughter. And I said, you need to ask her. I want to pray for her. God wants to heal her, but I can't do it with all that junk on her because I'm fixing to stretch my hand to her. She's going to get up. She don't need tombs. She don't need an oxygen hanging out her nose. I got to know something. Is, are you willing to take that junk off? Those paramedics' eyes got about this big. And they said, look, 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 she'll die the minute you take it off. I said, she's going to die anyway. They sent her home from the hospital. If God don't touch her, take the stuff off of her. The daughter leaned down to the dying mother and said, do you want us to take the stuff off? In her weak, trembling voice, she said, take it off. I backed up. They took all that stuff off. Those two paramedics backed up, backed up, put their back against the wall, I said, okay, Jesus, I can't heal a net of a headache, but I believe you're the miracle worker. I'm asking you to touch Letha right now. I rebuke death off of her body. Be healed in Jesus' name. You say, how can you do that? Because I was dying with leukemia at 12 years old. My mom and dad took me to a Pentecostal church and God healed me totally of leukemia that day. I'm not talking about I read a book to read a book. I believe this book. I believe everything it says. I believe somebody has got your foot on the edge of a miracle. It's time for you to say, I'm ready for my miracle. So I reached and got a hold of Letha. I said, Letha, get up in Jesus' name. Her face was ashen, the stench of death, gasping for air. She tried to get up and fell back on the stretch. I said, oh, no, no, no. You getting up and you walking on your own. I grabbed her again. I got reckless in my faith. I picked her up myself, stood her on her feet, and said, in Jesus' name, walk, live. And something came over her. Her face went pink, 
and the power of God touched her and she circled that building as God healed her. That church is standing on Pentecostal power today. A few, a few months went by and I was in Huntsville, Alabama, preaching at a big Church of God church. And they had, that was the day they said everybody on the platform. And so I was sitting up there and the pastor had fellowship time and the, some way the ushers were asleep at the wheel. And so here come this big woman down the aisle. I'm sitting up there, I'm going, she's fixing to get me. She had that look in her eye. She came right up on the platform. Nobody tried to stop her. She grabbed me, picked me up, whirled me around about three times. I said, ma'am, set me down. She said, you must not know who I am. I said, no, I, I don't believe I've ever seen you. She said, oh, yeah. My name is Letha, and God healed me and raised me from the death. Somebody got to hear me. It's your miracle time. Give him a shout in this house. So I want to tell you, you're on the edge of a miracle. I want, to sp I want you to be seated. I, I got to get out of your way. Listen to me carefully. There's something supernatural about this offering. You can ask my wife, I have struggled over it. I have prayed over it. I have wept over this offering. Something's about to happen for somebody like you've never seen happen in your life. God is about to do things for you that you've never dreamed possible. But you've got to be willing to give God your best gift. I don't know what that is, but I want you to give your best gift. If you can give 50,000, 20,000, 100,000, I don't care what it is, but I want you to give God your best gift. But remember, something happens when you write that check or you put it on your credit card for a thousand dollars. Things happen supernaturally. I'm not getting one thing. It's not gonna affect my life whether you give or you don't give. I'm simply on an assignment from God to help somebody in this room step into a whole new level of miracles in your life, miracles in your family, and I'm asking you right now to ask him, am I one of those that's to give a 1,000 or 5,000? You know it costs a lot of money to do an, a conference of excellence like this. I hate to tell you, but your little restoration fee did not cover the expenses. It cost a lot of money. But how many knows the 40 people that got saved last night is worth everything that... Come on, somebody. God gave DNI scripture. I'll give it to you and I'm through. I want you to get your envelopes, get your phones. I want you to text to give. I want you to give, and I want you to give sacrificially. I want you to give in this last night because you love God, because you believe in this ministry because you know it's changing the lives of men everywhere around the world. Now I want you to make a deposit tonight because I believe that when you turn loose of that seed, God's going to release the miracles that you need from God. Some of you, before you get home, God will have performed a miracle. Somebody sitting on the edge of the greatest miracle you've ever received. Don't miss the moment with God. Disobedience blocks the hand of God. Listen to me. God's heart is moved by your feeling, but his hands are moved by the seeds you put in the kingdom. I need God's hands working for me. 
I need God's miracles in my life every day. So I want you to obey the Holy Ghost. Listen to the scripture out of Amos 9, 13. Because God said this is a Amos 9, 13 message Bible season. When God gave this to D and I, miracles begin to pop in our life. I, I don't even have time to tell you all the miracles. Listen what it says. Yes, indeed. It won't be long now. Look at me. Ezekiel 12, 28 said, delay is over. How many is ready for the delay to end in your life for your miracles? Delay is over. Listen to what he said. Yes, indeed, it won't be very long now. This is God's decree. This is not what Coy said. This is God's decree. Listen to what it says. Things are going to happen so fast that your head will swim. You won't be able to keep up with it. Suddenly, one thing fast on the heels of another, you'll not be able to keep up with it. Everything is going to happen at once. And everywhere you look, blessings. Somebody say blessings. Do you all believe the Bible? Wave your hand. You believe the Bible? That's God's Bible. That's not me. In the last days, the King James said the sower and the reaper will be in the field at the same time. Somebody say acceleration. Say it with authority. Acceleration is coming to me. I want to pray for you. Then I want you to give like you've never given. Give God your best. Father, I speak a supernatural begin to happen in the lives of these people. Break the chains of debt off of their life. Cause them, Lord, to experience an anointing of increase that you'll favor them, that you'll turn it around for them, that you'll do miracles in their family, that they'll see physical miracles, financial miracles, spiritual miracles that begin to happen in their household. I decree it so, and I thank you, Lord, it shall be in Jesus' name, and everybody shout it, amen. I love you. Ushers, pass the buckets. Let's give our best gifts to God. I love you very much. Thank you for letting us shout and be in church with you. God bless you very much. Christian can do is to think rightly about God. God in Genesis 1 and 1 God in Hebrew means Elohim which is a reference to God's power and might. And Malachi 1 and 6 Lord in Hebrew is Adonai which is a reference to the Lordship of God. In Exodus 15 and 26 he's Jehovah Rapha which means he's our healer. In Genesis 22 13 through 14 he's Jehovah Jireh which means he's the Lord our provider. In Judges 6 and 24, he's Jehovah Shalom, which means he's the Lord our peace. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The same was in the beginning. With God, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made.
who created man. He the rock, he the lion, and he the lamb. Almighty leaves Satan deceased. He is the most high, Satan the least. He defeated him, he victorious. My God, too powerful, he too good.
on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, let's give God all the praise. Give Movement Dance Team a big God bless you. Give Movement Dance Team. Come on, let these kids know how much you appreciate and love their effort and their faith that builds up in this room. Come on, come on. Those are your children, actually. If you could see them as your children. Praise God. Wow, that's so powerful. So very powerful. Amen. You can take your seats. Thank you, Dr. Barker, for such a powerful, powerful, encouraging word and challenge on giving. And thank you, guys, and sewing. Those of you watching online for sewing online. And I stand in faith with you, with Dr. Barker, and just believing. I sowed my seed. I'm believing for miracles in my house and my family. Um, some of you may or may not know this, but the, Kaylee and Erica, the ladies leading us in worship, are our children. Amen. They belong to me and Judy, and uh, uh, I'm very proud of them, and man, alive. You know, it's just such a thing about the body of Christ. Every gift is so important. And uh, I'm so excited about where this thing is about to shift. And I, I say that prophetically because I know, honestly, in these next few minutes tonight, uh, you say, well, you just pile everything on. Well, if you go out here to Five Guys, you ain't going to get no sissy burger. You're going to ask them to put everything you can think of on that hamburger. Well, that's the way we build a conference or an event. We want to pile everything on we can get in that thing, that season, that time. Why? Because I want you to go home chock full. I want your pockets filled. I want your suitcases filled. I want your life filled with the glory of God. Where's Larry Raglan at? Pastor Larry, stand up. Last year, Larry, Pastor Larry, Larry from Birmingham, Alabama, brought his guys for the first time his church has been in revival since last year. It's so, this event so impacted those men that that church has been in revival since last year. I'm telling you, you're going home on fire. And so I want to get Bishop up here very quickly, and I know that... Um, uh, it's not late. Listen, some of you, when you were in the Lord, you didn't even crack open your first bottle of liquor till, I don't know, probably another 30 minutes from now, and then you drank all night, and then you laid there all day. We're getting started, and it's going to be really powerful. In the morning, somebody say in the morning. When? In the morning at 845, I want to meet with many of you, as many of you who will. I'm, I'm cooking breakfast. If you'll come and let's talk about uh, mentoring, let's talk about Company 22, which is uh, really my outreach uh, ministry to the nations of the earth. And I'm just asking for men who would come alongside of me to partner moving ahead. And it's not just about in terms of, it's more of a relationship, doing guy retreats, doing hangouts, doing some stuff together, mentoring and growing in the Lord. And so in the morning at 8.45, I'm going to meet with you. We're going to have breakfast together in the auditorium next to us, which is just adjacent from the cafe many of you have eaten at. But in the morning, uh, I think we're having, um, I think we're having uh, red-eye gravy and uh, biscuits and something else. I don't know. But anyway, <clears throat> it won't be Panera bread. I can tell you that. Ain't no grease over at Panera. That's a girl place. Sorry, Panera. Sorry, sorry. Send an offering, would you? You can afford to send an offering, Panera. Amen. Who's ready for the rich word tonight? Come on, who's ready for the rich word? How many of you were here last year with, with Apostle Jim Rayleigh? I, I call him the supernatural tornado from, uh, or hurricane actually from Florida. Apostle is such a mighty man of God. He and Pastor Dawn and their family pastor a powerful network of churches in the state of Florida. He travels all over the world. He's an apostolic covering to a lot of men and women in ministry. 
And we're just blessed to have this mighty man. He is our brother. Judy and I have known his family for many, many years. And uh, I am just blessed tonight to have this mighty man. I want you to stand to your feet tonight. And I want you to let him know how blessed you are tonight as we bring Apostle Jim Rayleigh back, back, back to King's Table. Come on. Bring him on. Bring him on. God bless you. Jim Rayleigh. Let me hold that mic. Come on, let's give that hand to Jesus, y'all. Now listen, you were clapping that good for me. But now you're clapping for a king. I said, now you're clapping for a king. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. You know what the Bible said to do? The Bible said to ascribe to the Lord the glory that is due his name. That means ever how good God has been to you. You ought to try to get your praise up to that level. So let me ask you, King's Table, how good has God been to you? Oh, I feel something in here. I feel that head rocking, cancer rebuking, child saving, real deal, family restoring, world put back together, anointing in this place. God's about to do something in here. Who's ready for a shift? I said, who came and you're ready for a shift? Open up your mouth and shout like you believe you can do it. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I dare, I'm about to preach, but I feel like praising him. I dare you to take your neighbor by the hand and shake him up. Just make sure they're awake. Say, neighbor. Say, this whole row is breaking through. I don't know about the row behind me. I can't tell you about the row in front of me. But this row right here is stepping into a new season. This row right here is stepping into a miracle. This row right here is shifting. Y'all, I feel something already unlocking. I said, I feel something already unlocking. One, two, three, give him a shout. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Ah. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. I better calm down. Y'all, I could dance all over this room tonight. I feel freedom in the house. Hallelujah. Somebody over here is about to get delivered. Somebody over here is about to get called into ministry. Somebody over here is about to see their world put back together. I wish you would praise him like you believe it could happen tonight. It could happen. Y'all, I'm trying. I, I, somebody turn around one time. Somebody just turn around one time. Just get in faith. Come on, man, turn around again. Turn around one more time. Tell your neighbor, say this is your turnaround season. Tonight is your turnaround. Your family's gonna turn around. Your children are going to turn around. Your money's going to turn around. This is a turnaround service. This is a turnaround moment. Oh, Lordy. Y'all, y'all better. Yeah. Okay, hold up. Lord, oh. Phew. Well, I'm going to try to come down a little bit so I can teach. But come on, one more time, give God a mighty praise. Come on, if you're mindful of his goodness. 
<sighs> Remain standing for the reading of God's word. I heard that Bishop Kevin Wallace brought it last night. I'm glad you got him saved. Come on, somebody. Uh, how many of you appreciate and love the Tuttles? They're my favorites. We love them. Let me tell you something. They came to me. I came to Calvary 26 years ago. Any country folk in the house? Come on. I, I was born in the country, but I was raised in the hood, so I'm a hood neck. Can I get a witness up in here? But they came to me when I didn't have a pot or a window. Come on, somebody. And they came to my church. And, man, when they came, I thought, it will never get any better than this. Judy Jacobs, the Tuttles are at my church. But I just honor you tonight, and I bless you. Don't you love the whole family, the girls? You want to know the, you want to know the quality of the man and the woman's ministry? Look at their children. Let's give those girls a great big God bless you. Pastor Miles Rutherford, I love you so much. Give Pastor Miles a God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Coy. Well, if you're ready for the word, shout, bring it on. Now, now I'm going to tell you, I'm going to have church with you or without you. I will preach myself. I will amen myself. I will give my own altar call. I will come forward myself. I will lay hands on myself. I will catch myself. And then I will cover my own legs up. Come on, somebody. But how many of you men ain't gonna let me have church by myself tonight? Did anybody come to go all the way in? Make a little noise if you came to go all the way in tonight. Hallelujah. Now, nobody knows your story better than you do. Is there anybody that remembers how far God has brought you? Okay, I got about 200 of you out of this big crowd. I said, is there anybody that remembers how far God has brought you? So tonight, I want to talk to you about staffs and stories. Bring me my staff. You see, in Bible days, when someone carried their staff, a man's staff was more than a staff. It was his diary. Hebrew rabbis tell us that every notable and significant event, every time God came through, they didn't have diaries like we have diaries. They couldn't take a picture on their phone. No, they wrote the story of God's faithfulness on their staff. Every victory, every time God came through, every time they won a battle they shouldn't have won, every time they experienced something they shouldn't experience, they carved it on their staff. I, I wonder if there's anybody here who has a history with the goodness of God. Come on now. Oh, let me ask you again. Is there anybody here tonight you got a running history of the goodness of God. You, if you had a moment, you could take this mic and testify that he is a way maker and a miracle worker. If that's you, come on, lift him up and give him praise. So I want to take our text tonight from Hebrews eleven twenty one. It says, by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshiped, leaning on the top of his staff, leaning on his testimony. When he leaned on his testimony, the Bible said he worshiped the Lord. Some of y'all that lost your worship, that ain't got a shout, you ought to just lean on your testimony. And remember how many times he made a way right out of nowhere for you. 
and I guarantee you, you'll find your praise. So I want to teach and preach. You know what teaching is. Teaching is telling it and preaching is yelling it. Come on. So I'm going to do a little bit of both tonight. But I want to preach along these lines. The his story behind my story. I'll say that again. Bring it on. Bring it on. This, we keep, we bring it on the screen. It's the his story behind my story. Look at your neighbor. Look him right in the eye. If they will look you in the eye, then look him upside the head. But say, hey, neighbor, I can't tell you my story without his story. I have no story apart from his story. He made all the difference in my life. If Jesus changed everything about you, open up your mouth and give him praise right now. Come on, open up your mouth and give him a praise right now. So, so slip up your hands if you want to get in this same oil I'm about to preach in. Father, we love you tonight. We bless you tonight. We thank you tonight. We adore you and exalt you. Have your way. In Jesus' name. Now, somebody give the Lord the ovation of praise. Come on, let's do it. Come on, is that the best you got? Go ahead and bring him the best you got right now. Before you sit down, push two or three men and tell them, say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Listen, my brothers, I cannot adequately relate to you my story without including Jesus in it. His story is all wrapped up in my story. There ain't no story for Jim Rayleigh without Jesus. Now, as I said, staffs were very important to the Hebrews. Each and every young man received a staff at a young age, and he was presented with his staff. And, of course, there were many practical uses for this staff. The staff made sense because it related to shepherding and overall life and vocation. But there was another function that the staff was used for. It was used to record everything that they had endured. It was used to record everything that they had survived. They would carve in to that staff everything they overcame, every battle they ever won, every time God ever came through. It was a running commentary of how good God had been to him. It was a running commentary of how often he was faithful and how many times he made a way right out of no way. They would carve their own story into their staffs and when times got tough and when attacks got intense and when situations got rough, they would pull out that staff and they would look at their own story and they would re be remembering that God was faithful. They would rehearse every time that God had come through for them. And I want to tell you tonight, young man, when you remember the goodness of God through past hardships, you can lean on past memories and find victory for present battles. It lets you know that if God did it then, he can do it again. It lets you know that if he saved one child, he can save the other one. It lets you know that if he delivered you before, he can deliver you again. And maybe you came into this place tonight I feel like preaching you've been fighting a big battle you've been battling for your family you've been battling for your future you've been battling for your faith you've been battling for your finances you've been battling for a son you've been battling for a daughter you've been battling for freedom I've come to tell you you need to do what the old man did in the Bible he leaned on his staff and he remembered the way maker and the miracle worker and some of y'all are here and you feel like quitting and you feel like giving up and you feel like your children will never be saved and you feel like your season will never shift but Jim Rayleigh is here on assignment to tell you it ain't time to quit it's time to lean in it's time to remember how many times God brought you through 
Remember how many times God made a way. Remember how many times God provided. Remember how many times God healed you. Remember how many times God delivered you. Remember how many times God opened a door that you couldn't open. And he did something that you could not do. And there are people around you. They think you're too radical. They wish they wouldn't have sat by you. They said, my God, now tomorrow morning I'm not going to sit on this row because this dude has shouted all night. He has stood up all night. But let me tell you, his shout ain't got nothing to do with you. His clap ain't got nothing to do with you. If God had done for you what he did for him, you might be on your feet giving God praise yourself. Uh. And the reality is, some of the people that are praised in the Lord the most radically are in the most intense season that they've ever been in. But they can't help but remember how good God has been. So I'm going to ask you to praise the Lord real quick at the inception of this message. I want you to praise God in three dimensions. Number one, I want you to praise God for what he's already done. So right now, I dare you to praise God for what he's already done in your life. Come on, men. I said, come on, men. I said, come on, men. Tell your neighbor, say, hey, neighbor, this praise right here is the praise that I'm bringing him for what he's already done. One, two, three, bring it to him right now. Bring it to him right now. Hey, hallelujah. All right. Number two, I want you to bring him a praise for what he's doing right now. I hear the Lord say, tell him I'm moving behind the scenes. I hear the Lord say, tell them I'm moving in ways they can't even see. I'm shifting what they can't shift. I'm touching what they can't touch. I'm changing what they can't change. I'm, I'm moving what they can't move. I'm moving behind the scenes. If they knew what was going on right now, they might just break their neck giving God praise. I dare somebody right now, if you believe he's doing something for you right this very moment, give him praise for what he's doing right now. Hey. I feel, y'all, I'm telling a pastor, a facility's about to open up for you. Y'all to praise him right now. I'm telling somebody who needs a new job, God's working it out right now. But the third dimension, I want you to praise him. If you've got a little faith and you can lean on your staff and you can remember what is already done, And you believe he ain't through, y'all. I'm. In the Bible, there are seven steps of praise. One of the steps is todah. It means to praise God like you got it, even before you get it. It means to praise God on credit. Anybody can praise God when you got money in your pocket. Anybody can praise God when all your children are saved. Anybody can praise God when everything is going right, but when you don't see it yet, when you don't have the money yet, when you don't see the children saved yet, when you hadn't seen the marriage restored yet, when you hadn't seen the season changed yet, and all you can do is look back on how good God has already been and how the, you believe that he's working for you right now, you can go ahead and say, I'm going to slip beyond what I see, and I'm going to move beyond how I feel, and I'm going to bring God a towel to praise. So let me ask you this. How you going to praise him when every one of your children gets saved? How you going to praise him when the door opens up? Let me see my phone. H how would you praise him? How would you praise him? Anybody got any lost family members? Make a little noise if you do. How would you praise him if you walked out of here tonight and all of a sudden your phone started vibrating and you looked at your phone 
and every one of your lost children had gotten saved and sanctified and baptized in the Holy Ghost, how would you praise him if every family issue had turned around? So right now, if he's done it before, he can do it again. Bring him a praise just like you believe he can do it. Hallelujah. So be seated. Because I want to tell you anything God ever did, he can do it again. And anything he did for somebody else, he can do it for you. So what happened in Bible days was someone's staff made them remember their story. If you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. A staff signified power. I, this, this message came out of my own personal devotions. And I was reading of the story of Moses. Now remember God appeared to Moses in the burning bush in Exodus 3. Then in Exodus 4, something amazing happens. Moses is in the middle of doubting his call. You ever doubted? Oh, look straight ahead and act like I ain't talking to you. Moses said, I'm not the man for the job. He's doubting his call. He's doubting his God. And he's doubting most of all himself. Then the Lord asked him a very unusual question. He said to him in the second verse, what do you have in your hand? He said, I have a rod, I have a staff. You see, God will never ask you for what you ain't got. And isn't it something that God wanted to know what Moses had in his hands? He said, I've got my staff. It was like he was telling Moses, you're carrying your own testimony in your hand right now. You're carrying the testimony of my faithfulness. I'm sure that Moses carved on that staff up until that point every miracle that God had done for him from preserving his life when Pharaoh was killing all the boy babies, all the male children to how God kept him in the desert, how God helped him survive. He already knew the goodness and faithfulness of God. He had seen the Lord keep him for 40 years. He was 40 when he left and ran into the desert and, and fled like a scared rabbit. And for 40 years, God had been faithful. And he knew the faithfulness of God. Let me ask you, is there anybody here tonight that knows the faithfulness of God? Come on. He knew the faithfulness of God. Moses' staff at that point, it would have had his testimony carved all over it. And he may have thought, this is great now. I, I came in the desert when I'm 40, but now I'm 80. Certainly this is it. But he stands in front of a burning bush, and the Lord meets with him. And, 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 and in that moment that the Lord met with him, everything started making sense. Even his name started making sense. If you define the name Moses, Moses' name means brought out. And the Lord is in the burning bush and says to, to Moses, it's time for you to go bring my people out. He said, I want you to bring them out of Egypt. And so things started making sense to Moses because he had been brought out away from his family. He had been brought out of the Nile River and raised in Pharaoh's house. He had been brought out of Egypt and in the desert. Everything about his story started making sense. Even his name now means brought out. And I want to tell you, I wonder if there's anybody here that's been brought out of something. I wonder if there's anybody here that could testify and say, Jim Rayley, I ain't always come to man revival. I ain't always been a, a man that's saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Is there anybody that's come out of anything? If you came out of anything, Thing. Give God a praise right now. 
Here he is now at 80 years old. And his name means brought out. And the Lord is telling you, telling him, now listen, you've been brought out. And your name means brought out. I brought you out of the Nile River. I brought you out when you should have died. I brought you out of Pharaoh's house. I brought you out so I could bring you in. Now I got a job for you to do. And Moses realized in that moment, he had been brought out to bring somebody else out. I dare you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, when you come out, if he brought you out, don't come out by yourself. If you've been brought out, bring your children with you. If you've been brought out, bring your family with you. If you've been brought out, bring your church with you. God, I wish I could find somebody to preach to. If you've been brought out, bring your city with you. If you've been brought out, bring your brother with you. If you've been brought out, don't come out by yourself. But if you've been brought out, bring somebody with you. If you're going to bring somebody with you, open up your mouth and give God a praise. Don't come out by yourself. Now here, here, here Moses is, 40 years old. He fled Egypt, winds up in the desert. Now he's 80. And I'm sure that he thought, my staff, has got all on it, it'll probably ever have. Surely at my age, y'all, I won't have anything else to put on it. I won't carve nothing else on it. I've gone far as I can go. I've done much as I can do. But the Lord, gave Moses an assignment and it showed Moses that God wasn't through with him. And I'm talking to somebody tonight. Maybe you think that God is through in your situation. Maybe you think there's too much water under the bridge, too many things gone wrong, or you're too old, or you made too many mistakes. But I came to blow the trumpet in Zion and tell you your story ain't over. Your story is being told. There is more God-orchestrated victory on the way. God is going to do some things that are going to blow your mind. Give God a praise if you believe there's more to your story right now. Let me ask y'all over here. Is there more to anybody's story over here? Is there more to anybody's story in the middle? Is there more to any? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so. The Lord told Moses, he said, throw that rod down. Moses was obedient to God, and he threw it down, and he picked it up. Ugh. And something had shifted, because he was obedient to do what the Lord said to do. And he began to start carving things, new testimonies of the faithfulness of God. I'm sure he carved in there. Today, this staff became a snake. Where y'all at? I threw it down and I picked it up and I felt power like I'd never felt before. And then he said, I went to Egypt, told, Israel, told, told Pharaoh to let Israel go. Then there were snakes 
and frogs. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And a river of blood and the death of the firstborn. I saw God move for me. Protect me. Oh, God. 80 years old, still having breakthroughs, y'all. 80 years old, still seeing miracles. 80 years old, he's carving it. We, we got delivered. We got set free from Egypt. And when we walk out, when we walked out, we walked out with a bounty. When we walked out, we walked out wealthy. When we walked out, we walked out with more than enough. Hey, Jesus. So, so I want you to understand what's going on. His staff is full of his story. And they're fleeing. And they're in the desert. And they make their way. Yeah. Y'all don't start nothing, won't be nothing. You better be careful. <laughs> they make their way to the, de to the Red Sea. And he gets to the Red Sea. And he's got the Red Sea in front of him. I, I might take a lap. Would y'all be mad at me if I took a lap in my own message? I'm about to take a lap. I, I said, I feel like I'm about to take a lap. Sure, So he's in trouble. And he knows God's been good. And he's got an obstacle that he can't handle in front of him. And an army that he can't defeat behind him and his staff in his hand. So what did he do? He stepped out in front of the sea and stretched out his staff. And when he stretched out his staff, he wasn't looking at the Red Sea. He wasn't looking at the army behind him. He was looking at his story. He was looking at what God had already done. And he said, God, you didn't bring me this far to leave me. God, you didn't deliver me to leave me. God, you didn't bring me out to leave me. Some of y'all right now, you're fighting hell. Some of y'all right now, you got an obstacle in front of you and you got an army behind you, but stretch out your rod and begin to thank God that if he made a way before, he'll make a way again. One, two, three, give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Watch this. Y'all sit down and have another glass of tea. Come on. So what, does a, what did a staff do? A staff would give you the ability to stand when the ground was unstable. When the way got hard, when the situations on the ground got rough, they'd pull up their staff and they'd lean on their staff and they could climb that mountain and they could traverse that problem is there anybody here that maybe you got some problems right now? Or maybe you've had some problems, but you've leaned on your testimony. Yeah. 
Even if you feel broken tonight, even if you feel weak tonight, even if you feel hurt tonight, even if you feel like you can't make it, I'm going to tell you something the devil doesn't want you to know. There is strength in your story. You see, the Bible said that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But one thing he can't steal. Y'all, I said one thing he can't steal. Make a pronouncement to everybody in your neighborhood. Tell him he can't steal my story. Yeah, he can't steal my story. He might mess with my money sometimes, but he can't steal my story. He might try to rob me of my joy, but he can't steal my story. He might try to pull me away from my purpose, but he can't steal my story. I've seen God come through too many times. I've seen God make a way too many times. Somebody give him praise if you're glad that the devil can't steal your story. Can I go a little further? If you want a little more, say bring it on. Now watch this. In 1 Samuel 17, David is preparing to face Goliath. Saul is trying to get David to wear his armor. David said, I, I, can't, I can't wear this. It's unproven. It's too big for me. Come on, somebody. See, the truth is you can't fight your battle with somebody else's weapons. Can I find somebody who's listening tonight? You can't fight, you can't fight your battle with somebody else's weapons. Listen, I know there's, there's preachers that will out-preach me. There's preachers that are more articulate than me. There are preachers that know more Bible than me. There, there ain't no preachers better looking than me because I'm 60, but I look good. Come on, somebody. I'm about to be 60. Come on. I'm just kidding with you. But there, there are preachers that will out-preach me. But see, David took them on, and all he had was a rock and a rag. Come on, somebody. All he had was a sling, not a slingshot, basically a rock and a rag. And he walked out there with his stuff and killed Goliath. Let me tell you, there are people that can preach better than me, and they look better than me, but you let me get my stuff in the right environment, and I'll kill every giant in the room because I know that I represent the one who is able to do exceedingly. Up, I don't see my own stuff. Some people say, Rayleigh, why are you still shouting? Why are you still full of the Holy Ghost? Why are you still laying hands on the sick? Why are you still binding the devil? Because I'm telling you, I found something that worked and I ain't changing now. Come on, somebody. David, y'all sit down. David told Saul, he said, I can't use that. That don't fit me. That's not mine. One side note, even when somebody's trying to help you, anything, Anything, tell your neighbor anything that would cause you to supersede your dependence on God. Anything that would make you stop relying on God, take it off. Anything anybody tries to give you that will cause you to quit counting on God, take it off. Anything anybody try to put on you that would cause you to stop depending on God, take it off. I wonder if there's anybody here tonight, you're depending on God and you're gonna see him be faithful. If that's you, one, two, three, make a little noise in the room right now. Hallelujah. Check it out. So David said, take, 
get this off of me. See, see, Saul is head and shoulders bigger than every, what, you want this? Come on, come and get it. I thought I was going to use this microphone, but I changed my mind. Everybody give Josh a God bless you. No, come on. Give him, he, did y'all see him tie my shoe when I was praying? Give a man like that who serves a God bless you. That's a big deal. So David decided that he wasn't going to rely on Saul's armor. And the Bible said <laughs> in chapter 17, verse 40, then David took his shepherd's staff. Then he selected five smooth stones. Ain't that a trip? He took that staff with his testimony carved in it. He recalled, I killed a lion here. Come on, church. I took a lion out here and I killed a bear here. Before he grabbed a weapon, before he grabbed a stone, he grabbed his testimony. And he said, if I brought that lion down, Goliath is about to fall. If I brought that bear down, Goliath is about to fall. If God helped me before, he's gonna help me again. I need to tell somebody in this room that if God has done it before, you ought to give him praise that he is able to do it again. Somebody, you better hear me. I've seen God change my life. I, there's some preachers in here. My whole story is a financial miracle. The building that I'm sitting in right now that seats 3,000 people. We built it in 2010 in the worst economy since the Great Depression. And everybody said, you can't build it. You need to stop building. But I said, you know what? A man didn't tell me to build it. And a man can't tell me to stop. I feel like preaching in here because I'm about to tell you something that I wrote on my own staff. They said you can't build a building, but somebody in my church sold a business. And when the bank said we won't lend you no money, The man came to the office and gave a $9 million tithe. Now you can get mad if you want to, but I'm trying to tell you, pick up your staff and remember. I need somebody to give God a 30 second praise right now. Take one neighbor by the hand. Wait, don't know. I know what y'all trying to do. Take one neighbor by the hand. Shake him up and say, hey neighbor, if God did it for Jim Rayleigh, if he did it for Jim Rayleigh, Jim Rayleigh's God is my God. Let me praise the Lord, cause he can do it for me. I gotta let it out. I gotta pray. Hey, I, I gotta praise. I gotta praise and I gotta let it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, I, I gotta praise. I gotta praise. 
noise and I gotta let it out. Yeah, I gotta shout. Ah, I, I gotta, gotta shout. Yeah. I gotta shout. And I gotta, if you gotta run, run right now. Say yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, I gotta shout. I gotta shout. And I gotta let it out. I gotta shout. I gotta shout. I gotta shout. I gotta shout. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. If you're in a dry place, get out your staff. If you're in a hard place, get out your staff. If you're in a difficult place, get out your testimony. All right, y'all sit down. Yeah, Lordy. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Y'all, I'm trying to land this plane. Now, what did David write after that? He said, yea, though I walk. through the valley of the shadow of death. <laughs> I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod. And thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He looked at his staff and he found comfort. Is there anybody, even if you're going through hell right now, you can look at how good God's already been and you can praise him right now. Hallelujah. Some of y'all are here. And the enemy's done everything he can to rob you of your peace. To make you feel like what you've been believing for ain't gonna come to pass. But I'm here tonight on assignment to tell you that your peace and power and comfort are linked to remembering and rehearsing God's goodness in times gone by. No need to panic. No need to get overwhelmed. David said, even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even if all hell is breaking loose, even if I'm hanging on to heaven with hell on my back, even if my children are going crazy, I'm gonna pull out my staff I received the anointing here when none of my brothers were anointed. Y'all, I survived Ziglag when the, Am the Amorites stole, ev Amalekites stole everything that we had. I came through that battle. He encouraged himself and God strengthened him because he was reminded of the faithfulness of God. Now let me say this. If you're in a dry place right now, it's not time to stop praising God because your deliverance is right underneath your nose. How many times has the devil thought he had you, but you had a little hallelujah in your mouth? You had a little thank you, Jesus, come on. A little wave of the hand, a little jerk of the neck. Come on, y'all. Come on, Pentecostal people. Now, let's jump to the New Testament. I'm getting ready to close. You know what that means? I don't mean nothing. Hallelujah. <laughs> and Jesus called the 12 to himself and began to send them out two by two and gave them power over unclean spirits. He commanded, watch this, watch, 
Bring it up. Bring it up. It's in Mark 6, 7, 8. It's a little down in the message. But it said, he called the 12 to himself and began to send them out two by two and gave them, watch, the power to overcome unclean spirits. Here, here's, here it is, the eighth verse. He commanded them to take nothing for the journey except y'all except what a staff no bag no bread no copper nothing in your money belt he said just take your staff just take your testimony don't take a bag of bread copper or money just bring your staff tell your neighbor say neighbor if I was you I would keep my testimony with me I would keep my testimony with me cause you know what your testimony does it makes you praise the Lord and it confuses the enemy because the enemy will birth every conceivable problem and issue against you imaginable but then you will pull out your spiritual staff and recall the faithfulness of God and you'll begin to praise him and God shows up in your praise. Some of y'all say, well, apostle, I lost track of God. Where is he at? I'm about to give you God's address. You ready? The Lord inhabits the praises of his people. It's P.O. Box praise. If you want him to show up, you praise him. Some of y'all right now, you're at work and people are on your last nerve. You got a boss that's driving you crazy. You got people at work that are driving you crazy. And, and you feel like just, mm, you, you feel like going off on them. But I tell you, rather than do that, just stand up and walk away from your desk or wherever you're working, go into the bathroom and get in the handicap stall because you know you're going to need some room and just start praising the Lord and say, God, I got to praise you because if you bless me here, you're going to bless me there. Oh, tell somebody, keep your staff with you. Keep your testimony with you. Don't forget the goodness of God. Don't forget how many doors he's opened. Don't forget how many issues he's settled. Don't forget how many times he's come through. See, see. Here's, now, now the staff was the testimony. I said the staff carried the testimony. If you want to overcome the devil, Revelations 12, 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Tell your neighbor, don't stop testifying because your testimony releases victory. Your testimony defeats the devil. Your testimony destroys the agenda of hell when you open your mouth and testify. So before I finish this up, holler at everybody around you and tell them, say, keep your staff with you. Tell him, say, carry your testimony with you. Now, if you're not ashamed of him, open your mouth and give him praise right now. Now, in the Bible, the staff signified, y'all can be seated, several things. It signified the testimony. It carried the story. But the staff 
was also a symbol of leadership. One of the things the Bible declared and said was that each tribal prince, each tribal leader of the 12 tribes was given a staff with their names on it. And they would bring their staffs in alignment, help me Holy Ghost, before God in the tabernacle. They would bring their testimony together. These 12 men, oh y'all, would get together and collectively testify. I mean one testimony defeats the devil. But when you get everybody in the room collectively testifying that he will make a way right out of no way. When you get everybody in your road testifying, that's when the enemy has to take a step back and say, I really can't have his children. I really can't have his marriage. I really can't have his purpose. There's something that happens when we come together and testify. In the tabernacle, they would bring their testimonies in alignment and it would unlock the miracle zone. It would unlock the supernatural. Now, I want to tell you that we are more powerful when we testify together. So, I got a couple testimonies tonight. Give me the first one. Come on up here, young man. Has he done anything for you? I dare you to give God praise. You ain't even heard it yet. How many of you gonna line your testimony up with his? And when he testifies, you gonna break your neck giving God praise for his and yours. Come on now. Tell, t- tell me your story, son. Testify. There's your staff. Um, I grew up as a preacher's kid. Um, started preaching when I was 15. Uh, backslid in 2002 because I was outwardly holy, but my heart was wretched. And uh, backslid, left the church, moved out of the country, uh, developed a horrible drug problem for 16 years. Um, backslid totally, changed my name, moved to a whole nother country, started hanging out with the most dangerous men on the planet. Um, ended up all my friends either dying or getting killed, moved to Amsterdam. And uh, my mother was our pastor back in Alabama. And every Tuesday night, she would gather the women around my picture and she would scream me home and she would pray me home. But as I was in Amsterdam, God put a six foot five Dutch woman there at the at Grand Central Station to sing, have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the lamb? And March the 1st on 2017, I walked by that woman one last time and she said, have you been to Jesus? And on March the 2nd, 2017, I boarded a plane in Amsterdam and now I pastor a church in Alabama and I haven't looked back and I give God my testimony. I give God all the praise for my life. I give God the praise for a woman that wouldn't quit praying. I give God the praise for this men's conference that I could stand here and tell you the story how God brought me through hallelujah now I need you to get your staff and I need you to lean out with it and get your testimony in alignment all right one two three give God a praise all right This young man's got a testimony. Everybody give him a God bless you. This is his first public testimony. Come on, give him, give give God praise for him. I grew up like they preached about last night. I didn't have a father growing up. I was running the streets, didn't have any direction on what I wanted to do. My grandmother tried to keep me, tried to keep me in church. But I, I was running from God 
I, I was doing everything that everything that I shouldn't be doing. When I was when I was about 16 years old, I got I got hooked on drugs. I started off low, and I I just got I got to the worst drugs you could possibly think of. I was living on the streets. I was living. I was walking the roads. I had nowhere to go. My mom. My mom. She she tried her, she tried her best to get me from where I was at. I couldn't I couldn't get away from the drugs. The devil had a hold on me. I was running, and in 2015, my mom passed away in a tornado. When she passed away, I was running further. I kept running and running, and then I went to prison. I went to federal prison, and my wife, my wife and me couldn't understand why this was happening. I had a son. I was getting sent to prison. In the midst of all that, these two pastors grabbed my wife. They held on to her brought her to God. She brought me to God while I was gone in prison. She brought me to God and I heard all about my pastors. And when I, when I finally got home and I came to church, I've done nothing but chase God. I've done nothing but go for God. I've gave him everything. And he's given me so much. He's gave me a daughter. He's, he's gave me a great life. And I praise him for everything he's done for me. Everything. And let me tell you something, son. You ain't seen nothing yet. God's going to bless you. God's going to open doors for you. God's going to give you everything back you lost. Oh, there's power in your story. Oh, somebody give the Lord a crazy praise. Somebody lean in. Somebody lean in. Somebody lean in. Somebody lean in. I need somebody to lean in with your testimony right now. Hey. Come on, son. Talk to us. Everybody give this young man a God bless you. One, two, three. Give him a God bless you. Well, just like Chris, I grew up with a very difficult household. I grew up with a very abusive father. Um, at the age of 13, I started struggling with homosexuality. From the age of 17, I got thrown out of my home and I started struggling with addiction. Um, at the age of 18, I moved to Atlanta, Georgia, and I got addicted hard. Then I, get, got, um, I stepped into uh, male prostitution. Then I signed my first contract with porn. Then, <laughs> come on now. I was so lost and broken. Then the Lord just got a hold of me in the middle of the night one night, showed me what hell was like, and all of these people were standing next to me screaming why I didn't tell them the truth. And I woke up and I cried out for the first time in four years. I cried out to the Lord and I said, Lord, just be here. And I kept saying, Jesus. I didn't know what else to say, but Jesus, Jesus. And I heard the Father's voice say, I'm making a way for your move out. I'm making a way for your move out. Three days later, I went and I came back to church and I gave my life to the Lord and ever since then I have been chasing after the Lord. I have about 15 young men that I disciple out of addiction, pornography, homosexuality, homos come on y'all, come on. Your children ain't too far baby. Your children ain't too far baby. Hey, your prodigal is coming home. Hey, I want to tell you this. My mama, my mama, just like you, Pastor, my mama didn't give up. I was living with a man, and I was about to get married. My mama, out of everybody else in my family, my mama showed up. She went and put Sharpie scripture all over her body in case she came into that home and she declared the truth of the Lord. And listen, when she left that house, my mama's handprints were on the wall. And my boyfriend at the time looked at me. He said, what is that? I said, that's my mama praying. That's my mama praying. Let me tell you something. A praying mama will move mountains. A praying mama. Oh. All right, watch this though. One more time, one more time, Bishop. I'm so sorry. Before I left, God opened the door so I could lead my boyfriend to God and lead his 95-year-old, 95-year-old grandmother to the Lord. 
and now for four years I've been just chasing after God and the Lord has blessed me with the most beautiful fiance of my life y'all wait a minute come up here daughter wait 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 I need somebody that will lean in cause here comes the bride I said here comes the bride I'm telling you God will make a way somebody needs to get out of your seat right now somebody needs to run out of your seat if you got a testimony you need to run out of your chair and give God some praise about a thousand men I need about a thousand men who ain't ashamed to praise the Lord this is your testimony your praise is your testimony your shout is your testimony your dance is your testimony one two one two three go I'm leaning on my testimony. I'm leaning on the faithfulness of God. Yeah, Lordy. Now, now, now. Is there anybody in the room that can think of one thing that God has done for you? I said, can you think of one thing that God has done for you?
Can you think of one thing that he did for you that surprised you? Make a little noise if you can think of one thing. Oh, he ain't done nothing for you. You just stand there. He ain't made a way for you. You just stand there. He didn't open no door for you. You just stand there. He didn't save you. You just stand there. You let everybody else praise. You just stand there. Oh, apostle, I ain't emotional. I ain't going to act like that. I ain't emotional. You ain't got no trouble getting angry. I said you ain't got no trouble getting angry. You ought to get crazy and give God a praise up in here right now. Hey! For every mountain you brought me over for every trial you see me through for every blessing Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For, For this, I give you praise. For every mountain. For every mountain. You brought me over. You brought me over. For every trial. For every trial. You see me. My soul says hallelujah. Hallelujah. For this, I give you. Come on, mister, throw your hands in the air. Say for every mountain. You brought me over. it again. Something's breaking in this atmosphere right now. Say every mountain. Every mountain. You brought me over. For every trial. You see me through. I want to thank you for every blessing. Hallelujah. God will heal you. God will deliver you right now. If you're praising for what he's already done, raise your hands and say now. You sing, Judy. sing it one last time and I want every man to raise your hands and declare for every mountain Yes, I do. 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 How many of you got at least one big thing? How many of you got at least one big thing God did for you? 
Do you have one big thing? Can you think of it? Is it on your mind? Look at your neighbor right now and share it with them. Tell them. Tell them. Lean in. Lean in and tell them. Come on, tell another man what God did for you. He saved me. He delivered me. He healed me. He saved a child. Come on, let's bring, our, let's bring our staffs into alignment right now. Let's bring our staffs into alignment right now. Now look at your neighbor and just say, hey neighbor, now that you know my story, you'll understand this praise. One, two, three, give him praise. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody's shifting right now. Somebody's life is shifting right now. Somebody's marriage is shifting right now. Yo, I've, I've got a little bit more to do, but I'm going to try to land this plane. But I'm going to ask you to do something. I want 100% of the men that will to come right here to the front, or at least in the aisles. Do everything you can to get up here. Come on. We've been in the middle of revival. I've never seen so many miracles in our churches. We have eight campuses. And every one of them is in an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We've had several people with stage four cancer. And the cancer has completely left their body. We had a man. We had a man come with stage four cancer, melanoma. It was from his neck to his waist. And we've been having outpourings of the Holy Spirit. Anybody says that you can't build a significant ministry with a move of God, they're lying to you. You say, well, apostle, you got that radical church. Aren't you afraid you're gonna offend the seeker? I don't wanna offend the seeker. I wanna make that sucker squirm. Come on, somebody. I want him to come in my church and say, I ain't never seen nothing like that before. But this man with stage four cancer, we prayed for him. We had a baptismal service. We baptized, I don't want to blow it up, but I bet 400 people or more. And he was set to be baptized, and we had to baptize him first because they said that he could not get in any water that had any kind of contaminant in it or anybody that had something that on their body. He had to be baptized first, so we baptized him first. And then we prayed healing over his body, and we bound cancer and we rebuked it in the name of Jesus. And there was a woman that had been in our services, our revival services three weeks before. And I testified to him that God healed her of stage four cancer. And the doctor first said the cancer is asleep. And the next time she went back, he said, I don't understand it, but the cancer is gone. We can't find it anywhere. So what did I do? I just got my trusty staff out. And I just testified to brother, and I let him know that it's already happened. We've already seen stage four completely disappear from a woman's body, and the doctors are without any kind of explanation. Well, we baptized him, prayed over him, and on Easter Sunday, he came back and somebody came up and whispered in my ear, house is packed with thousands of people. And they said, you remember that guy that was baptized and he had stage four cancer? He just testified to me that he went back to the doctor last week. There was nothing on his body whatsoever. The melanoma was gone. He had been completely healed. You see, my testimony changed his life and his testimony is now changing somebody else's life does anybody have a testimony that might shift somebody's season what i'm trying to tell you my brothers is this if god's you want to testify this man this I'm talking about you. Talking about 
man with a stage four cancer. I, 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 uh, I went to Duke University, North Carolina. I uh, talked to the best of the best doctors. I took the latest and greatest medication out there. And five months in, the uh, doctor come in and me and my wife were sitting on the, behind the door on the, sitting in a chair and he come in and he propped up. He come in and he propped up on the bed. He had, he had bad news written all over him. And, and he told me, he said, I don't know what further to do for you. He said, he said you're, all I can tell you is keep doing what you're doing. He, he said, he, uh, he said uh, my lymph, lymphatic, it was melanoma. It, it started out on the back, back of my arm. It, uh, it went down, uh, it spread to my lymphatic system under my arm. They, uh, they did surgery and they removed, removed this stuff. And then I, I took the medication and five months in, and five, five months in, uh, they come in with a report. I had a CT scan. They said my lymphatic system from my neck down to my waist. Just like that man from my church. Was three centimeters in size. The, the cancer had spread to my lymphatic system from my neck down to my waist. And it was on my small intestines. And uh, I, went, I went home with a report of the doctor that I had a death sentence. And I, me and my wife, we, we, uh, we cried in tears that night. We, uh, we, we cried ourselves asleep. But before I went to sleep, I prayed. I prayed to God. I said, Lord, just give me peace. That surpasses all understanding. At nine o'clock at night, I went to bed on that. In the wee hours in the morning, it was still dark outside. My phone rang at five in the morning. And the man on the other end, he said, son, you were on my heart this morning. He said, you're on my heart this morning. God called me at 5 a.m. in the morning, said, you're on my heart this morning and this is gonna be your way out. I followed what the Holy Spirit gave me. It was obedience. It was obedience. Obedience until what the Holy Spirit gave. I followed it. And I won't get into the details right now. Tell us what happened. Tell us about the good report. Amen. Two months later, I went back for my uh, follow-up. And the... Uh, the same doctor came in <laughs> with that piece of paper. He said, uh, I, my, my, three, my three centimeter uh, lymph nodes that were in my body, he said, uh, I can't even find them. Hey, hey, he said, uh, hey, hey man. So, so you're telling us that you went from death, certain death, to abundant life. Eternal life. Somebody give God a praise in here. Somebody give the Lord a praise in here. So the Bible says, that in Hebrews 11, 21. The old man was dying. Theologians tell us that he was probably very nearly blind. But on his deathbed, he blessed Joseph's sons. And the Bible said in the 21st verse, that he leaned on his staff and he worshiped the Lord. I'm sure he leaned here and said, this is where God came through for me here when my brother wanted to kill me. He could feel where he had carved it. 
This is where the Lord met me and wrestled with me. This is where I survived when my father-in-law cheated me and took advantage of me. This is when my heart was broken because I thought my son was dead, Joseph. But this is where he gave Joseph back to me. Somebody's about to get something back you thought the devil stole from you. Somebody's about to get your joy back. Somebody's about to get your purpose back. Somebody's about to get your tomorrow back. He leaned on his staff and he worshiped the Lord. Are there any worshipers in this room? Come on up here, daughters. I want somebody just to lean on your staff. Slip up your hands and y'all sing whatever you feel like or bring just a little bit of glory in here because God's about to release the supernatural in this room. Come on and worship, daughters. Hallelujah. Why don't you open up your mouth, men? Some of y'all say, well, apostle, I'm I'm thinking of praise. You don't, you don't think of praise, you speak one. You say, well, apostle, I'm worshiping the Lord in my heart. You don't worship the Lord in your heart. You worship the Lord from your heart. You worship the Lord with your mouth. Somebody lean on your staff and worship the Lord. Even if your children are lost right now, lean on your staff and worship the Lord. Even if your marriage seems like it ain't going to make it, lean on your staff and worship the Lord. Even if it feels like your job is about to play out, lean on your staff and worship the Lord. Even if you're fighting addiction right now to pornography, lean on your staff and worship the Lord and know that if God set this young man free, he can set you free. Even if you're struggling with same-sex attraction, Oh, if God delivered him, he can deliver me. Just lean. Somebody just worship right now. I'm looking for some worshipers. Oh, somebody needs to just go ahead and remember what God has done for you. Somebody needs to go ahead and recall the faithfulness of God. Somebody needs to just go ahead and rewind and replay. Oh, God, I bless your name. I bless your name. Come on in this room, men, and open up your mouth. It'll unlock a new season for you. Y'all sing, baby. So I fall my hands, praise you again Cause all
testify with your praise right now. Come on and testify with your shout right now. Come on and testify, testify, testify. Who's got, who's got children in here? Do you know what the man did? The Bible said he leaned on his staff and he blessed his children. His testimony became a blessing to his children. I declare that your testimony uh, is going to become a blessing to your children and your children's children. Yeah. You're not going to be ashamed of it. You're going to be thankful for it. Yeah. Somebody who believes that your testimony can bless your family, give him a praise right now. through what I've been through not to bless somebody. I ain't fought what I fought not to bless somebody. Men in this room, people in this room may not understand your worship. But it's because they don't know the His story behind your story I look at my life and you look at yours every page every day uh, time and again he came through for old Jim Rayleigh and my story is all wrapped up in his story had it not been for the Lord who was on our side when men came in they would have swallowed us up but the psalmist said my soul escaped just like a bird out of the snare of the fowler I'm almost done. I need to take my seat. But I want to tell you that if you will remember that your story cannot be told without his story, you're going to make it. And when you remember that your story is all wrapped up in his story, then you will make history. Raise up your hands. I declare there are history makers in this room. I declare that your testimony does not die with you, but it is generational if Jesus tarries. I decree and declare that God is going to use everything you've been through for your good and for his glory. I decree and declare, oh, I feel this in my spirit. I hear the Lord say, even now, as they're reflecting my goodness, things are shifting. Sons are shifting right now. Daughters are shifting. Marriages are shifting right now. Hallelujah, I said marriages are shifting right now. Prodigals are coming home right now. Oh, God's breaking alcoholism off of somebody right now. God is breaking alcoholism off of somebody right now. God is breaking nicotine addiction off of somebody right, y'all, come on now. God is breaking pornography addiction off of somebody right now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's doing it again. He's doing it again. 
He's doing it again. He's healing again. He's delivering again. He's making a way again. Oh, he's setting somebody free again. Oh, he's returning a prodigal again. Oh, if he did it for you, he'll do it for your children. If he saved you, he'll save them. If he delivered you, he'll deliver them. Slip up your hands. I decree and declare that you are marked for this moment, by this moment, and you will never be the same again. When the enemy comes against you, you will remember your story. Uh, I can't get away from this. Somebody is getting delivered from alcoholism right now. God is delivering somebody from alcoholism right now. If you need to be delivered from anything, you just receive it right now. This is the atmosphere of angels. I said, this is the atmosphere of angels. This is the atmosphere of miracles right now. I need somebody to give the deliverer a great big praise. Give him a thank you right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So I throw up my hands and praise you again.